Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake. Man, I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on Denver rapper FBP Mo, who's been charged with 14 counts of attempted murder and was one of 10 gang members indicted in Operation Ricochet. April 18th, 2022, the Denver District Attorney announced Operation Ricochet, a two-year-long investigation into a criminal street gang known as Few But Plenty. FBP was formed by members of various gangs within Denver, Colorado's metro area. Some of these gangs include GKI, short for the Gangster Killer Incas, a West Denver gang now going by the name Gallant Knights Insane. The East Side Oldies 13 is a Denver-based subset of the Serenos, a California-based prison gang predominantly made up of those with Mexican heritage. The Crenshaw Mafia Bloods hit Denver in the early 90s, originating as an all-black gang but over the years began accepting many Mexican and Asian members. According to the investigation, it appears Hispanic members of all three gangs formed FBP to promote music while taking on light blue bandanas and hand signs representing Westside. Operation Ricochet would be the first takedown targeting FBP and the violence behind the music. Moses Fernandez Jr., identified by investigators as FBP Mo, would be the face of the movement and FBP's biggest rising rapper. Raised by a single mother in Denver's West Side, Mo would detail in interviews the origin of Few But Plenty as a family motto passed on by his uncles. In June of 2019, tragedy struck as one of Mo's cousins whom he considered a brother was shot and killed. June 2nd, 2019, Lakewood police received multiple calls just after 4 a.m. reporting shots fired. Arriving on scene, police located a house party with two gunshot victims, later learning another two victims had arrived at a nearby emergency room. Among the four injured was 17-year-old Daniel Avila, suffering a hole in his chest as doctors began emergency surgery in an attempt to keep him alive. But doctors would fail, and Daniel would die on the operating table. The following month, FBP Mo would release his biggest song to date titled No Pressure, in which he memorialized his cousin. The music video currently stands at over 1.5 million views. Continuing with the music, another one of Mo's cousins would find inspiration in Mo's success, starting a rap and going by the name FBP Spaz Out. The two could be seen together in an interview with the Somewhere in the City podcast on YouTube, where Spaz Out states he had just started rapping in December of 2019. But before the interview was posted to YouTube, tragedy would strike again. January 22nd, 2020, a teenager was dropped off and left at an urgent care facility in South Denver. Soon after, he was found to be suffering a gunshot wound, declared dead, and identified as 17-year-old Jeremiah Baca, also known as FBP Spazzo. A police investigation determined he'd been shot during an attempted robbery roughly 15 minutes before being dropped off. Less than two months later, police would arrest two men and one juvenile, charging them all with murder. According to Operation Ricochet, the investigation officially started January 23rd, 2020, the day after Spazout was killed. Within two years, 10 members of Few But Plenty would stand accused of 14 shootings, targeting rival gang members and anyone associated with them. The 114 felony count indictment would detail FBP turning 47 people into victims through a series of violent acts, majority of which would drive by shootings targeting rival homes. Motivated by the demons that come with the lifestyle and the losses of those you love, as shots were fired, videos were uploaded to YouTube with song lyrics dissing rival gangs and detailing acts of violence. FBP was able to profit $12,800 solely off of music videos posted to YouTube during the time of the investigation. Exactly one year after Spazout was killed, another shooting would hit home for FBP when shots were fired out of an SUV taking the life of 45-year-old Paul Baca, Spazout's father. Both father and son dead by gunfire on January 22nd, exactly one year apart. At this time, 
Mo was the only one out of 10 not in custody and is currently on the run. Police believe he has ties to Las Vegas and is suspected of being anywhere from Nevada to California with a $5,000 reward being offered for information leading to his arrest. Mo stands accused of violating Colorado's Organized Crime Control Act, which is the state equivalent of a federal RICO. He also stands accused of conspiring to commit murder, 14 attempted murders, and various other charges. In one of the shootings, Mo was accused of committing a drive-by with another FBP member, striking the house 21 times with 45 and 9mm bullets. Other members included in the takedown can be seen with Mo during interviews and in music videos themselves with damn near every one of them being accused of terrorizing Denver. It's safe to say all 10 members are facing up to a life sentence in Colorado State Prison and time will tell whether FBP Mo will be caught or disappear into a life on the run. Now something I want to highlight in this video is generational gangbanging. I know some of y'all are going to be like, damn, the kid got killed and then the father got killed on the kid's anniversary for his death. It's generational gangbanging. The father can be seen in a picture the old school Chicano fit with the light blue bandana that says West Side. This is something that they inherited. This is a lifestyle that they inherited. This is something that they picked up from the people that they looked up to growing up. And for that reason, generational gangbanging has caused generational losses. So as sad as it is to lose multiple family members and to see the son repeat the footsteps of the father, this is exactly what the fuck comes with it. You know, and that's why people respect certain gangsters because it's like y'all really living that life. Y'all really doing it. Y'all really making music about shit that's really happening. But it's a double-edged sword. While you get the respect from other gangsters of doing something real, you really suffer the consequences. And now Mo's on the run, facing forever. Whether he's been caught or not at the time of this video, I'm assuming he hasn't. And best bet, he's gonna have to get the fuck out of the US if he hasn't already. He's gonna have to get lost in South America and go wherever he can go. Now, one thing that I did notice is none of FBP has been charged with an actual murder. Everything has been attempted murders and mostly shooting up people's houses, which I don't really respect because you don't know who's inside of that household unless they're willing to just kill anything that's inside of there. Me personally, I feel like you should go after specifically who you want to go after and leave everyone else out of it. But that's just me. You know what I'm saying? And who am I? I'm just a YouTuber. But just because they haven't been charged with any murders doesn't mean they weren't committing murders. It doesn't mean that they didn't actually catch a few motherfuckers, but the only crimes they were caught for was the shit that they attempted to do. And to be honest with you, it sounds like after Daniel was killed, and then Spaz Out was killed, then boys were just on a rampage trying to hit up whoever the fuck they could hit up. It's revenge. That's what it sounds like. It's all alleged. That's an alleged motive. But if that in fact was the motive, and that's the lifestyle y'all live, I can do nothing but respect that because you're doing what you're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, for y'all, the viewers, it doesn't mean that's what y'all should do or should want to do. Y'all can look at the, oh, he's living like that, he's bought it, he got 1.5 million views, so fucking what? They only made just under $13,000 in two years. You can make more money than they were making working at McDonald's. Their music wasn't making money like that, it was just getting them clout. And clout is worthless, especially once you go to prison, everything's over with, everything ends. So understand that before you glorify the lifestyle. The lifestyle comes with nothing but destruction and pain and you have to see both sides of that double-edged sword before you even consider getting into it or spending the rest of your life living that type of lifestyle but hey it's 1090 jake i'm rocking with y'all y'all rocking with me till next time